sit Let me show you around this bar Cause you look too damn good Not to wind up in my arms It ain't what you had planned Come on and take my hand Girl, I wanna get you in the middle Of a sawdust dance floor Holding on One, two, step into a country song Truck band seat with you kissing on me Doing those things make you wanna come back Girl, I wanna get you, wanna get you like that Welcome everybody to our May Pig Channel seminar. Uh, today's hosts are uh, myself, Blaine Telly, with Swine Health Professionals in Steinbach, Manitoba. My good buddy, Dennis Robles here. Hello everyone. And uh, I wanna thank everybody that has uh, joined us for this afternoon session. We've got a beautiful sunny day here in Steinbach, Manitoba, uh, which seem to be few and far between this spring and so, we're grateful for that here and also grateful for you for taking time out of your busy afternoons to, to join us for the next hour or so. Uh, before we get rolling, I just want to uh, make a couple of, of thank yous to our all of our sponsors really, but particularly our, our featured sponsors for today's presentation, SIVA and PIC. So without their generous support, these seminars would be uh, more challenging to put on. So thank you to those two companies for today's uh, featured sponsorship. We will also be posting a video of this presentation to our Pig Channel website next week. And so anybody that needs to jump off or, or missed part of it, or wants to recapture some of this handsome guy, uh, <laughs> you can always go to that website next week. And, and, and catch this it. handsome vet. Well, maybe not, maybe not. Um, what else, some, some housekeeping. If you have questions throughout the presentation today, uh, please use the question and answer uh, button feature at the bottom of your screen. And uh, Dennis is going to monitor his uh, computer and, and try and keep up with any questions. And uh, we may save them mostly for the end as well. But uh, anyway, feel free to ask questions. If we don't get to your question, uh, feel free to reach out to us or any of your uh, pig health professionals in, in our vet group that can certainly address any of your questions about uh, today's topic as well. We have some door prizes that will be drawn next week as well. And uh, uh, what do you have there, Dennis? Look at this oh, Yeti. It's a beautiful nice Yeti cooler and a Yeti uh, coffee mug, insulated coffee mug. <laughs> and sorry, a $50 gift card as well. So nice. some per lucky participants uh, will be able to... Uh, when their, yes. their lunches and beverages cool this summer. <laughs> That's right. All right, without further ado, let's get down to the meat and mm -hmm. potatoes, Dennis. I'm gonna share my screen. I keep, uh, the series for the Pig Channel seminars this year is troubleshooting. And so we chose uh, two topics that I think uh, every pig farm across Canada will, will run into challenges with from time to time. And that's, uh, piglet diarrhea in the farrowing crates, and then strep suis meningitis, so strep pigs. Mm -hmm. I mean, those, those are two issues that are, are uh, very common yes. and very frustrating on many farms, and uh, they often Absolutely. leave us scratching our head yeah. and, uh, and pulling our hair out. But I mean, <laughs> you can see I've dealt with a lot of these challenges, apparently. The thing is, it, it just always there you're like you're in, you're out, it'll come and then, you know, it's- uh, Flares up, flares goes up, away, yeah. flares up, yeah. yeah. So we're going to talk about kind of our approach uh, to uh, troubleshooting some of those those uh, challenges. This is our approach. I mean, it won't be much different from 
the other 17 veterinarians that are in our group. And uh, we really do believe in the strength of, of our team. And uh, like I said, if you have any questions or, or uh, comments for our vet group, feel free to reach out to any one of us. So how to approach scar flare up. I don't know which one you are, Dennis. Is it, this is me and that's you maybe, I don't know. That's what I feel yeah. like. <laughs> That's, that's this us. Is, this is us, okay. That's us for sure. So what we're going to approach first, a scour flare-up. So um, let's get into that. If you call your vet because you've had some more scours than you're used to seeing, I always think be prepared to answer at minimum these questions. And not just answer them, but try and have verified that these are your answers are kind of really what's happening and not just what you think is happening in the barn. So when is the scour happening? How old are the piglets? When did it start? Was it just starting last weekend mm -hmm. when it got really cold or has it been going for a couple of weeks? Yeah. Is there vomiting? What color and consistency is the diarrhea? We used mm -hmm. to be able to tell more from that, I think, mm -hmm. 20 years ago. Um, but you know, it's still important to know, is there is it yellow? Is there blood in it? Yes. Whatever. Uh, how many litters are affected in the barn? Gilts, sows, everybody, no trend. There's a trend. Mm -hmm. uh, which part of the barn? Which part of the barn? Yes. Are the sows eating? Yep. Are the sows milking? Or do you think there's actually lots of good good uh, appetites and lots of milk there and mm -hmm. just the piglets are still scouring? Yes. So, I mean, those are all <clears throat> the, the kind of basic first level of questioning. But then we kind of get into it and dig deeper. And that leads us to the real question. That's right. The which, real question, which is? Which is? What changed? What changed? What's changed in your farm? What's changed in your farm, yeah. So, I mean, yes. something's causing this one yellow airplane to just diverge off, right? So we've got the mm -hmm. scour flare up. You know, it's not random. We don't get random events mm -hmm. that I'm aware of happening on farms. Yes. There's always a, a causation. We don't always determine what the cause was, but there always is one there. Yes. So I like to keep things simple because I only have two brain cells and one of them's usually uh, not functioning well. So keep it simple. Why does the pig scour? It's pretty simple. <laughs> that pig has to have eaten some crap. Yes. And that crap had some pathogens in it, E. coli, rota, PD, something mm -hmm. like that. It, it has to get inside its body through its mouth. I, I remember us talking about this a month ago and as we were preparing for this, it's like, yeah, I could be, you know, environmental or everything like that. But then really, you're right. It's if the if the bug is there, then <laughs> if, the, if the bug is inside the pig, inside that's the that's pig. the starting point, right? Yeah. So, I mean, that's really simple. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, let's get a little more technical because <laughs> we're professionals after all. Okay. Um, so I always kind of think things in, in three different categories or three buckets. So is there no antibody or protection? So those immunoglobulins that are in the colostrum and milk, we'll talk about those in a minute. Mm -hmm. is, is there no antibody or not enough to protect the pig? Yep. Uh, is there anybody there, but it's the wrong stuff. Mm -hmm. It's the wrong type for protecting against that scour bug. Or maybe there's milk, there's antibodies in the milk, mm -hmm. but it's not in the pig or the piglet can't use it. Yes. So, so those are kind of the three technical, simple answers. Mm -hmm. I've got on the screen here, um, the kind of two different, very different antibodies that are similar. Mm -hmm. So I said they're similar, but they're different. IgG, if it's kind of small, but the IgG antibody is uh, really highly concentrated in the colostrum and it's absorbed by the pig on that first six to 12 hours. We, you know, mm -hmm. what do you always say about the first six to 12 hours, Dennis? Yeah, well, they, they need to consume that. Yeah, that colostrum. the timing is important. The timing there, is right? really, really important because that's, it doesn't last forever. That's right. Yeah. IgA is very similar. You'll see if you cut this IgA antibody in half, basically you have an IgG. So if you link two of those antibodies together, there you go, now you've got an IgA. Now that, that antibody now has become of a certain size and shape that doesn't get absorbed. So we call that secretory IgA. So the piglet, or the, sorry, the sow is actually gonna secrete this IgA into its milk. And that milk doesn't get absorbed as a protein or whatever into the piglet's intestine or through it, it stays in the in the lumen or the opening in the in the intestine. Mm -hmm. And as long as it's in there, it protects or it mops up some of those rotaviruses 
or other bacteria or pathogens. So that's IgA. So the difference is important and we'll, we'll keep coming back to this kind of theme. We're really talking about passive immunity. So yeah, passive immunity. Passive, yeah. yeah. So yeah, okay. it's this is simple. This is uh, this is the kind of immunity the piglet gets just by drinking the milk or colostrum. Mm -hmm. That's all it has to do. It doesn't have to have any kind of an immune response itself to mm -hmm. to gain the protection. And that passive immunity comes from mum. Okay. And so you'll see here I've got a picture of some piglets suckling. Mm -hmm. Every suckling event, right from <clears throat> when it first suckles the colostrum is passively taking in protection. Mm -hmm. Once the colostrum is gone after 24 or 48 hours, yep. that piglet continues to get passively protected through its milk and specifically that IgA. So, I mean, here's, here's uh, some kind of simple ways to look at things. Mm -hmm. So the IgG, high levels in the, in the colostrum. So it's yellow, it's thick. You can just imagine it's high protein. Mm -hmm. I was going to ask you about that. Mm -hmm. What's the difference between colostrum and milk? Oh, I'm glad you asked that, Dennis. Okay. The difference between milk now is it's about 10% less in protein, mm -hmm. give or take. And the type of protein, the type of amino um, of immunoglobulins, which are antibodies, mm -hmm. are these secretory IgA antibodies. So the types okay. that they just are present, they don't get absorbed. So hmm. what does that mean? Where is, where is IgG important for and where is IgA important for they have their own uses i guess eh? they do yeah and so if you look at this kind of cartoon pig if if the pig drinks colostrum which has the igg in it the yellow ones they get absorbed they go into the intestines and they get absorbed and circulate around the whole body as protection mm -hmm. now protection against what lots of things good question yeah yeah lots of things lots so of things. We're going to talk about strep later on in the presentation, mm -hmm. and that's one of the things that the colostrum protection okay. early on is pretty important for, mm -hmm. for that piglet. Now, look at the, the glasses. It looks like milk because it is milk. Sow's milk, high content of IgA. Mm -hmm. and where is that in the pig? In the gut. Only in the gut. Yeah, I don't have it being absorbed anywhere because it's only in the gut. Mm -hmm. And so that's really what is going to protect the pig against the scour. And so we call that lactogenic immunity or lactogenic protection. Lacto is Greek for milk. Milk, yep. Lactogenic immunity. I learned that in uh, <clears throat> grade school. Good job. Okay. Yeah, good <clears throat> test at the end. So the other thing that, that uh, I, th I think is kind of interesting, um, and maybe this is review for everybody in the audience, but uh, each teat is like a single cylinder engine. Mm -hmm. So what happens to this to this engine it doesn't affect the engine beside it. It's a single entity. It's a single entity. Yeah. And so sometimes that piglet that is on, we, you know, you've heard this saying, uh, if you're not doing very well, you're sucking the hind teat. Mm -hmm. So that comes from pigs, right? Oh, yeah. I, th I think it comes from pigs. That's that's my story anyway. <laughs> we'll stick with that. <laughs> and what it means is that that the last few teats, and you guys all know this, but the last few teats are not as productive. Mm -hmm. In fact, the colostrum antibody levels is lower in those back few teats as well. And so if you're sucking the hind teat, you're kind of disadvantaged because you're not getting the, the high octane <clears throat> jet fuel. And so that the, the, the engine and the hind teat is kind of weak. That's right. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And so that's that's important to kind of important to keep in mind. Mm -hmm. So we come back to our, our question. So why is the pig scouring them? So what's the question? The main question? What changed? What changed? Something changed. Yes. It's not random. That's right. So we're going to break it down into sow factors and piglet factors. Okay. And uh, you know, not to oversimplify things because nothing is simple, as you as farmers know, nothing is ever simple. Mm -hmm. And just when you think you've got to figure it out, it changes. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> I've learned that. <laughs> but it's most likely a combination of factors. Yes. So we say this is multifactorial mm -hmm. and, uh, and it's not going to be one or the other. It's likely a combination yes. that's adding together to reach a certain mm -hmm. threshold. Of, it would have been easy if it's just one, but it's always a combination. Would of, be, yeah. Yeah. That's right. <clears throat> okay. So what changed? How about the cell? So kind of three different levels of, of areas we need to look at and really go through systematically and figure out, okay, first, is there no milk or not enough milk for mm -hmm. 
the whole litter or individual pigs? And if there's not enough milk, why? Mm -hmm. Is it something that we're feeding or not feeding? Yeah, nutritional, yes. Is there mycotoxins in the feed mm -hmm. that can play a role? Uh, is it hot? I mean, we, oh yeah, definitely. We haven't we, had that this year yet. <laughs> not yet, but we will. And we will. It, it happens yeah. every year. And those first few days when in Manitoba, we reach, you mm -hmm. know, mid to high thirties and the humidity jumps and, mm -hmm. and it doesn't cool off at night. That's those right. salads just won't feel like eating mm -hmm. and won't feel like nursing. And so maybe that that's a challenge. Yes. And, and I think now more, it's more, it's challenging with getting really hot and then at night it gets cold. So that adds on to the, to the stress. It's huge stress. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Maybe you've got mm -hmm. other health challenges or you're lame. So if, if you're, if you're sick, if you're a sick sow, you're not going to feel like nursing and certainly not feel like getting up to eat. So maybe, you know, over top of all the scour you're seeing is actually some other event happening. We've mm -hmm. seen this a few times and, and in other provinces where you deal a lot more with purse breaks, um, you'll know that one of the first things that we're going to check if we've got a scour flare up is, is there a purse, a new strain of purrs mm -hmm. or a purse break? Because right. the pigs are just born weak and they mm -hmm. scour. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, you have to check that off. We don't miss many meals, you and I. Yeah, they can tell. Yeah, okay. Can tell. Don't, know, <laughs> don't need to mention that. But, it, I mean, if we just talked about how important that lactogenic protection is, you can imagine if a piglet misses a few meals, mm -hmm. what happens to that protection? Well, it goes down. It goes down. Yeah. They, they, uh, they don't have those IGAs, antibodies floating in their intestines. Absolutely. So. Any missed meals or bad news? Mm -hmm. so th those off-feed events, I know I've, I've seen it happen. You know, well, in winter time, they can get to the barn and stuff like that. Those, those can factor in. I mean, we had a doozy yeah. of a winter this year. Oh, so, yes. yeah. Too much disruption by us is here I'm talking about. And, mm -hmm. and uh, I know you, you really focus on how much pig movement happens when you're <laughs> troubleshooting things yeah. in barns. So. Yeah, make sure we don't disrupt as much as necessary, yeah, right? That's right. That's the, that's the main point. Yeah. Um, it's not as common anymore, but some farms still vaccinate in the farrowing crate. Many vaccines are pretty smooth. Like they're not gonna really have much impact on the sow, but yeah. occasionally we'll see a, a sow that kind of gets stung by her vaccine mm -hmm. and, uh, and she'll go off feed for a half a day or a day. And you know that's not gonna help with our lactogenic protection. No. Yeah. The other thing that I think is always really interesting to dig into is looking at guilt introduction into the farm, mm -hmm. not just from an immune standpoint, which is all important. That's a whole nother pig channel Discussion, topic. Yeah. Um, but just in, in <clears throat> the numbers and guilt targets, and uh, we will invariably see scour flare ups and herds that have quite very variation in guilt introduction. So mm -hmm. One week there's 10 gilts farrowing and the next week there's 20 and then there's four. And if that's yes. up and down. And that's why we try to pe preach, be consistent. Be consistent. If you're doing 10 gilts every week, that will be ideal to get that all the way through. You know, even if, if you're under your target, but consistently, then we can do something about that. <laughs> but it's the inconsistency that's really hard yes. to, to really dig into problems and, and troubleshoot when we really don't know how much variation is happening in the background. That's right. And then I'm not sure how common this is, but uh, I think there are a few bad mothers out there, mm -hmm. sows that just, they never learned how, or they, they just don't have it in them to yes. nurse one side, roll mm -hmm. over and nurse the other side the next next uh, time they let milk down, all those things. So. Yeah, and it's good to be observant and know which those sows are, because mm -hmm. if we can flag them, then we can, you know, yeah, put that in there and then call them if they're really that, that, yeah, that that's bad. That's a good idea. So that's so, kind of the the <clears throat> no milk or not enough milk mm -hmm. sow factor. Okay. What if we've got milk, lots of milk in the piglet, mm -hmm. full bellies, um, but there's no protective IgA, protective antibody in the milk. And so, you know, this is a problem. Yes. And so what, what could have led to that? Well, maybe you've got a new bug in the barn going in yeah, yeah going in there yeah so maybe the scour is flared up <clears throat> having nothing to do with her previous history mm -hmm. of health maybe there's an introduction of a new bug yeah um i mean that happens we we've <clears throat> had you know i don't know if you you've heard this dennis we've had a lot of pd this winter 
Really? Yeah, we really did. Okay, yeah, we yeah. really did. Yeah, okay, we're not out of it yet, but okay. Yeah, take my That's word for it. Yeah. yeah. So we're I mean, up to here with, with that. Yeah. The only reason please. we can we can laugh about it is because we can only laugh about it. Yeah. Those are all new introductions, right? When those mm -hmm. farms break with PD, it's because that's a new introduction yes. of, of the virus mm -hmm. or a reintroduction. Maybe they had it before. But, <clears throat> but uh, in most cases, other than PD, um, that's pretty rare unless you've changed guilt sources. Mm -hmm. And then you certainly can bring in a new bug with yes. your new guilt source. Um, <clears throat> but most of the time, if we do a, uh, some lab diagnostics and we find, oh, there's a rotavirus B in your barn, most likely it's been there for years and years and years and something changed. That's our question. That's, that's it. To allow that rotavirus B, group B to, to flare up. Mm -hmm. um, or it's, it's mutated. And vi some viruses do that. Rotavirus is one of those that changes over time. So anyway, maybe it's a new bug. Maybe it is new, yeah. Uh, may and maybe we've got the wrong vaccine. Hmm. Or if we're backfeeding as part of our, our scour management strategy, maybe we've got the wrong strategy yes or maybe we have a a new person doing it and it wasn't trained properly and the back feeding process was not done well. that's right yeah things like yeah. that so i mean again these are things that you know you you need to verify uh it's it takes more than just asking the question and, mm -hmm. and uh you know looking for the answer you need to verify but um maybe we've got poor vaccine timing or compliance yes. like you said if it's a new person and maybe they vaccinated the wrong row in the dry cell mm -hmm. i mean all kinds of Yep. Funny things Absolute, can happen. Absolutely. So, yeah. yeah. Or a poor vaccine response. <clears throat> yes. If if you've gone through a, a flu break recently and you know the sows were really clinical the week you were vaccinating uh, that feral group with the scour vaccine, maybe they didn't respond to the vaccine properly. So mm -hmm. you know, and, and if you uh if you don't record some of those events in your farm diary, oh you know, then month, we don't know. Yeah, a month later you make what's changed? <laughs> well, we're looking into all these other things, but maybe it was Oh yeah, we had that flu go through. That's right. Five and it, weeks ago, and that's why it's really go, good to record all those events yeah. mm -hmm. that change, so that you know when we come or you come to the to investigate, we we have an answer. Yeah, and we, we know, know what oh, changed. Yeah. Did yeah. something happen? Yeah, around I, that time. I really like producers who have that written down in in, in the calendar and it's like, oh yeah, this is what we did. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, perfect. So the third thing with cell factors is just maybe you've got milk, um, you've got the right antibodies, but there's just not enough of them. There's just such high shedding or the environment is so contaminated, so mm -hmm. polluted with virus or bacteria that the piglets being overwhelmed, the amount of antibodies being overwhelmed by, by that level of challenge. Mm -hmm. um, I've rarely, but I've seen it happen a few times where we back, back fed with really good intentions mm -hmm. and actually caused a little more scour than before we backfed. And I mean, that's a, uh, that's that, a hard one to, that, that never happened. Yeah, it did. Uh, yeah, it uh, happened on two farms <laughs> that I worked with. And I mean, and it was rotavirus and I'll show you some lab results mm -hmm. here in a second because it happened again at the same yeah. farm. So uh, it can backfire. It and, can backfire. Yeah. yeah. And so that, but I think it's still in my toolbox one of the strategies mm -hmm. that is it because we're feeding way more or a different kind of yeah and or maybe too close to farrowing and so it's yeah. still the, in the timing system. still is yeah. uh, really important okay. I'll, I'll come back to that point in a few <clears throat> slides from now yeah parity distribution i talked about it earlier with the guilt variation but uh if you've got lots of guilt you know guilt will shed more organism and so it's not surprising if you've got a high number of gilts farrowing mm -hmm. to see a bit of an uptick in scour just from that. Yes. And we come back to that whole <clears throat> consistency. Consistency. Yeah. 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 Too much disruption by us again. So mm -hmm. this this can lead to higher levels of shedding because not all pigs are going to be really like liquid diarrhea when we move if we're moving pigs around, right? Mm -hmm. But if they're just starting to scour. And if you've got a new person or you're not as observant today because it's a Monday morning or whatever, mm -hmm. um, and you, you swap some pigs out or move some pigs that are already shedding yes. virus, you're making more scour challenge because you're mm -hmm. moving it around yourself. We'll talk about that. In, and, in and, and it's, let's say, fostering. That's what the thing we try to preach is not to move pigs around, especially those that are, you know, you're showing signs of, of diarrhea. Basically, just you're spreading it around. It was like, this pig is 
you know, I want to size the letters mm -hmm. into, you know, you have your ruler and you're going to, you know, we don't do that now yep. because that's what we try to teach is to uh, keep the letters intact so they don't, you know, they don't scour, you don't have much disruption mm -hmm. and then you're, you're more depending on the, the, the sow's um, own colostrum and milk. Less is more. Less is Less more. movement is absolutely is more beneficial. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. We won't forget about the sow factors, but let's shift over to piglet factors. Mm -hmm. And so, if we're troubleshooting these scour flare ups, we need to look at piglets, and maybe the piglet could not get the milk. Mm -hmm. So maybe the the right IgA, the right antibodies in the milk. Yes. But if the piglet's not ingesting it. Yep. It's not going to do it's anything. All, it's only as good as what is ingested, right? Yeah. I mean, it does no good being inside the cell. That's right. It needs to be in the pig. That's right. And so I always think, you know, I'm always amazed by litter size on farms. And mm -hmm. we just don't seem to be really plateauing even. Every year we see advances on litter up, size. Up and up. Yep. And so, you know, it always seems that the teat count is a little bit behind the born alive. Mm -hmm. And so as our born alive goes up, we get more perhaps small piglets born, the, the birth weight variation yep. is, is more significant mm -hmm. and we don't have as many teats. And so you start really relying on those hind teats. Yes. Yeah. So, I mean, maybe that's a factor. Um, I know you talk about that teat piglet mismatch. and Absolutely. And that's, that's what we try to teach all the time is really look at the other line mm -hmm. and you, and when you say those those are single engines, make sure that the engine is working, it's functional, and it's gonna, you know, provide milk to those pigs all the way through until we wean them. And, and if it stops providing milk, there you go. Your protection level goes yeah. up, right? You and need to you need to act. Right? Yes, yeah. and it's it's that's one big thing that we focus on when we're doing. Uh, our workshops and teaching the guys to really, really observe and count functional teats. I remember one of our producers even have a written number of functional teats outside their farrowing rooms, just to know if you have a thousand. Oh yeah, functional... like they count, they add up yeah, all they, the cells yeah. in the room. And then teats. if there's more piglets there, then it means that, hey, we're... Oh, yeah. No, that's, I mean, that's it, interesting. As, yeah. as detailed as that, because it's really important. It's really important yeah. to get one pig, one teeth. Obviously, others would argue, hey, some some share. But uh, out of a thousand piglets, how many would share? Maybe pretty, pretty rare. Pretty rare, yeah. So, And I can't imagine those are nice looking pigs at the end if they're sharing. But anyway, <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. They I, have scratches and stuff. I don't like sharing myself. So. Yeah. In fact, I'm just <laughs> going to tilt this way because I don't know. <laughs> Just there kidding. we go. Um, yeah. So, so the other thing is uh, chilling. I mean, if a piglet is chilled, yeah. Where's that pig gonna hang out on the teat or yeah. go back to the heat pad? Yeah, I still remember back in the day, chilling is really cool, right? Oh yeah, we were but pretty not, chill. We were, but not for pigs. Not for pigs. Yeah. No. Chill's I'm, bad I'm gonna pigs. talk about that a little bit yeah, too. Okay. So, and again, missing meals. So if if we're moving too much, yeah, too many <laughs> pigs around, we're we're gonna cause we're going to cause two meals to be missed mm -hmm. first by the pig. We just moved because when you move them to a new litter, yeah, it takes a while to figure yeah. out, Oh yeah, this is my teeth. This is where I go for my meal now. And mind you, the other piglets there will fight. You so they're going to miss meals yeah. too, because they're so, busy. Yeah. You know, so protecting their teeth. So, yeah. You know, so we, I mean, we management wise, we have to be really, really smart in doing this. That's why we minimize disruption. Do not foster them as much as they need them mm -hmm. to be. And yeah, make keep it simple. Yeah, keep it simple. That's right. Less is more. That's right. Okay. Piglet has milk in the belly, but there's no protection, still scour. Mm -hmm. But the milk, the bellies are full. So first we go back to those first three lists of cell factors. Mm -hmm. Or I guess the two because one was there was no milk, but the other two, there was milk there. So are all those other things being addressed or has something changed with the cell? Yes. Because if there's milk in the belly. You know, we hope that that's going to lead to this this milk protection. Mm -hmm. uh, overwhelming contamination. Yeah, we talked about that. We'll we'll talk more on biofilm coming up, mm -hmm. um, and and specifically internal biosecurity. Yes, I, I mean, we I all worry about keeping diseases out. 
yeah. of the farm. Because, but... because I think it's always be going to be there. It's just that the level of it sometimes can overwhelm pig because mm -hmm. pigs are really resilient, would you say? They, would, could, yeah. they, they, could, they could fight it. But then when they are overcome by, you know, overwhelming factors and there's too much load. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. So how do you know if a pig is, is getting milk? Well, I mean, often we can kind of, if you pinch their belly or you can see it, they've got big bellies. Um, a good way to do it though, is to sacrifice a few and cut them open if you're unsure. So here's three pigs up top before we cut into the stomach. And you can see already this pig, it's got an empty stomach. You can't even see the big belly. This is the belly full of milk curd and over here too. Mm -hmm. So if we cut those, Belly's open. Um, there's no milk curd there. Lots of this milk curd, cottage cheese or milk curd, mm -hmm. and some there too. So, so that's what we're talking about. The pigs need to have milk in their belly. <clears throat> yes. So. Okay. Okay. Well, it starts. It starts in the <clears throat> at birth. Oops. Why is it not moving? Oh. Okay. <clears throat> and that's this is what thing we we cannot talk about. Most of the time, it starts at you know when they're when they're born. <clears throat> when you talk about scars and stuff, <clears throat> challenges of the newborn piglet is one thing we always talk about because they are come they're at a disadvantage coming out. Mm -hmm. Okay, first one, they are born without any antibody protection. Mm -hmm. Okay, this leaves them very vulnerable to different pathogens that or diseases that are present. Their bodies contain enough fat energy reserve for just one day of life. One day. Just one day. And, you know, if you put in factors that can even shorten that, we'll talk about that, that's uh, that's going to be detrimental to the pig. Mm -hmm. So piglet, if it's born and doesn't get colostrum and, and get a teat, well, it, it won't last a day. It won't. No. Okay. Honestly. I believe you. You, you believe me. Yeah. I, I know that. Piglets can regulate internal body temperature well for its first few days of life. And it must be protected from chilling. That, that's chilling again, right? I mean, if you you can imagine piglets are, are, are born wet, right? They, they tend to be, if there's a bit of draft and they tend to, yeah. Like, to chill. like when we went to the beach that time? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I always, I remember, uh, is it you or Dr. Mike Sheridan telling, said, telling that story that imagine going into the barn and it's winter, you're showering in and then you don't towel yourself, but instead of going in the barn, you go out <laughs> in the winter. That's basically what the pig feels, mm -hmm. right? They're, yeah. they're, they're cold because they're, they're wet. So um, anyway, going back to them having no antibody protection, that's what colostrum is for. It has antibodies that provide systemic uh, disease protection against diseases, one of which is strep psoas, which we're going to be talking about. Yeah. You might not see it in the, in the firing grade right then, you know, but then maybe if you're seeing problems in the nursery, it, it could be a... Well, I guess the other thing too is it, if you're protected by colostrum in week one and two and three of your life, you're mm -hmm. not going to have those the, as many just health challenges that might cause you to miss meals mm -hmm. or become susceptible to sc developing scour secondary to something else too. Absolutely. So yeah, all this stuff is huge. You, you might have a really big pig, right? Mm -hmm. some, this is what we see sometimes um, in, at weaning and in the nursery. But then they're the ones that succumb to mm -hmm. the strep. Why? May, maybe because they didn't have enough colostrum that they There's should. A ticking they, time bomb. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So, so there are many things we can do to help uh, colostrum be in the pig. One is to prevent them from chilling, so they stay warm, right? And they suckle well. You can dry them. You know, you can use a towel or you know. A drying agent, what our friend here is doing, it's we call it shake and bake, just getting them, yep, getting them dry. Split suckling is one thing that we kind of mm -hmm. talk back and forth about. Just making sure that all the piglets get the two hundred ml of, of colostrum that they need. And then the other thing, if you're these pigs are now split off, 
Mm -hmm. But I guess they're probably getting warmed up too. Yes. And that's, we're going to talk about that because um, those are two different things that we, split suckling and uh, warming, those are two very important things to consider. And, and, and the purpose of one is to just especially warm the pigs. And two is to, uh, again, provide them with the colostrum that they need. So again, to prevent them from chilling, you, you know, use shake a towel, and bake. shake and bake them. <laughs> and uh, this, this uh, guy is using a towel in his barn, which okay. I think is, uh, is pretty helpful. What do they do with those towels? I can just imagine on a busy fairing day, you're going to have a lot of towels. Yes. It, it's some guys use, um, you know, disposable towels, okay. some, but they do put them through laundry and yeah, yep. put them through yeah. laundry and wash them. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> this is not a good idea, just spreading the powder on the, <laughs> the pad. That's not shake and bake. <laughs> no, <laughs> their hooves are, are dry, but their bodies are not. So, um, dry toes, it's important too. <laughs> yeah, it is, it is <laughs> but not, not that. Uh, There's nothing for keeping them warm. That's right, I guess. Okay. So this is what you talk about supplemental heat source. It's mm -hmm. good to provide them that heat that they need because, as I said, as we said, there's no internal body uh, yeah. heat regulation. Mm -hmm. So it's good to have that. I like this this ring thing because it 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 moves to do whatever space you put them in in the fairing crate and um, yeah, part providing heat and also. Splits up. Yeah, I like it too because if you've got a heat pad, then they're still on actually getting directly onto the heat source. Mm -hmm. And if they've got a little diarrhea already, you're not likely to contaminate that ring. We'll talk about the, the processing cart. Yes. Okay. It's, uh, that's always a challenge in my mind with those mm -hmm. carts. So, yeah. Okay. So, so, yeah, those are the things. And also, one thing that can cause chilling is drafts. Mm -hmm. Okay. There's all, especially now. When it's getting warm, we need to have air movement in there. So when it's warmer, I, would, I mean, <laughs> yeah. this is always that that kind of, uh, it's almost opposite of what you think. That's right. right. So, so Because some guys warm their room, uh, the whole room to warm the piglets, which is right. not, a, not the, the best idea. Mm -hmm. And and in, in, in winter, actually, it's easier to, you know, Maintain, maintain the, the, the micro environment. That's right. right. The micro environment that we will want because there's two animals in the in the firing room, right? The sow and the piglets. Yep. So you want, they have two different temperature requirements. So in summer, you want air movement because it's, it's, it's hot. So there's more air, more draft. Yep. Okay. So in that case. But, if it, but it, coming into my farm, I'm going to say, yeah, but it's warm air. <laughs> it's coming it's nice and warm dead well it, 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 you're still your pig is still wet when they come out so it, and i always do this at workshop you know put put some some uh, some gel in your you know hand sanitizer in your on your on yep. your, on your hand yeah. and then blow on it it's cold mm -hmm. even if it's hot right and yeah. that's that's the same thing with piglets so you want them not to chill as much as right. you can so some use the this uh, cover, plastic cover. We know we've seen lots of oh, our yeah. clients yeah. and uh, do this just to prevent that draft from dropping in on those wet pigs. Okay, so it, it's helpful. Some some barns don't use it, but you know some, most of the, the the barns we help are are using it. So okay, it's uh, going back to that analogy of of the piglets having. Only 24 hours uh, of, oh, yeah. of energy. Get, I'm lucky if I get 24 yeah. hours on my phone. <laughs> yeah, our phone, as an example, it comes out, it's full of, you know, energy, but just for 24 hours. If we don't use or do those things that we talk about, like drying them, keeping them warm. Charge the battery. Yeah, it, you're going to drain your your yeah. battery, mm -hmm. your, your phone or your piglet. Okay, so that's why we charge it. And what is charging it is all those things that we talk about, giving them, making sure that they have colostrum, they have, they're warm, they're dry, and set them off to, to a good start. Yeah. So cool. That's a good analogy. Yeah. That's, that's I'm going to use that. Okay. I'll, I'll give you credit, but I'll use that one. <laughs> yeah, I like it. So there you go. And uh, 
Let's talk about internal bias. Oh, program. yeah. Like this is, we talk about this a lot, right? Oh, Almost yeah. every farm we go to, it comes up over and over. And mm -hmm. I always, I'm going to make someday some decals that go on the fern crate and it says no step zone. Oh. Because okay. I really don't want to see anybody's boots going inside the crate ever. Yeah. And I mean, okay. There's some 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 uh, facilities, Blaine, that that's kind of hard to do, but I mean, that, the challenge these days, and I would admit, we've got barns being built with really big fairing crates, that's right. or they've got to adjust the feeder at the front or whatever. So absolutely, mm -hmm. I guess I should say minimizing. There you go. It just doesn't sound as good as no step zone. <laughs> minimizing step zone. <laughs> It's, it's, a, it's a long because it's, it's too long yeah so i mean but there's things that we can do mm -hmm. i mean the oh, whole point sure. is that we can we can be moving the scow around on our, on our instead hands. of going in there 20 times then maybe we can just go there once or zero absolute zero again mostly zero <laughs> just that's the best one yeah um so i mean i got a couple examples here some farms will use these pig hooks and mm -hmm. so if you can't reach the front of the crate, then using the hook, you can kind of pull them from the back leg. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, that can actually be quite helpful. And these pig grabbers work really well too. Yes, to, I love those. An extended, you know, three feet of reach. Mm -hmm. You know, my hands are not that long as yes, yours. I know. So these grabbers are good. <clears throat> Here's an example. Here's the farm I was talking about actually, where we backfed and caused <clears throat> some problems. I mean, it wasn't horrible, but it was, this farm had a, an ongoing scour flare up for actually a very long time mm -hmm. and we struggled. And uh, so I'm not gonna get into the biology of the rotavirus too much, but there's three types. So if you understand there's A, B and C types of rotavirus. Mm -hmm. And then they're actually not oral fluids. The lab put that there because maybe it looked like that it was actually a swabbing. And then uh, we put the swab into liquid. So we swabbed all these surfaces. We swabbed that tattoo pliers and syringe from processing mm -hmm. cart. We swabbed the processing cart. We swabbed the person that was processing his boots because we watched them stepping into all these crates to grab pigs. Um, the back gate to the ferron crate, mm -hmm. uh, the sink counter and counter in the lab, like the cleaning room where we take our processing supplies yep. back to. Mm -hmm. uh, we swabbed that where all we're washing all these this equipment and supplies. And the lab couldn't read my writing, unfortunately, but this actually number six sample was a guilt that furrowed and mm -hmm. uh, we just swabbed her back end, basically okay. from her bum down to her underline. Mm -hmm. And what you'll see is that we found a lot of virus <laughs> everywhere. <Yeah. laughs> it's it really literally, when you have a scour flare up, rotavirus is such a hard virus to, to kill. Mm -hmm. It's a, what we call a non-enveloped virus. And so it takes a lot of disinfectant power to kill it and heat. And really the most important thing is just washing well. Yeah. get it down into the pit getting it down yeah. okay. so i mean uh, this was an interesting study so this is actually this was a guilt that was back fed probably only about 10 days before she farrowed and what we think happened was she's still shedding herself because mm -hmm. that was her first exposure yeah or re-exposure to the virus so anyway it was one of the thoughts we had but uh, mm -hmm. yeah that, that was a frustrating case well it's a good learning experience i'd say yeah I can learn from books too. I don't need to experience it all either. But yeah, I mean, it was, it yeah. was, I won't forget that. Now when we recommend backfeeding, we're going to be more strategic about yes, it. Yes, and be, be more conscious. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, you showed some of this already, but uh, I mean, other than split suckling and how we do that, the processing mm -hmm. cart is a, like, it's really the disease central location for our fairing rooms. And so if you're putting this litters pigs into a cart, processing them, putting them back, mm -hmm. getting the next one. If we have one pig out of all the litters we processed today that scoured, that cart is going to be highly contaminated, yeah. just like this one was, Absolutely. right? This processing cart had all this virus in it. Mm -hmm. And so um, I like to just get rid of the cart. If we have a, a farm break with PED, instantly we get rid of the cart. Yes, no more that's what we cart. do, yeah. Uh, and we like trays and these trays are like, I mean, they're very simple, they're homemade, but they're easily washed mm -hmm. every day and then disinfected well. So, so we can do things better that way too. And I used your ring. This is your picture, but, uh, I wondered if we can use these rings instead of the cart. Cause I mean, I'm going to say, Hey doc, you come here and process and have to 
chase pigs around and around the cell trying to grab them. So maybe this is a way to contain yeah. the pigs. And you have the ring there. The ring there. Yeah, instead of putting in in the in that cart that you have there. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, is this ideal? No, because we're still going to contaminate the mm -hmm. ring. But at least they're not as contaminated in the bottom Absolutely. where the scours. I think it's a good idea. Yeah. Thanks, Dennis. Okay. Yeah. Welcome. When is clean clean enough? Well, my mom said never. <laughs> yeah. Or for me anyway. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Really concerned. Like everybody can see when a crate is not washed well. Yeah. There's still we some can, we can see that crap in the corners or whatever. Mm -hmm. Then yeah. Even more important than that part is that if we get all the crap gone, but the biofilm is significant, right? And biofilm mm -hmm. is just all of the organisms, bacteria and viruses with mucus and organic mm -hmm. matter and mineralized component from mm -hmm. the hardness of the water and the ammonia from the urine. So you mean, even if I don't I wash it and wash it, it's not, it's still gonna be there? I mean, here's some pictures. Here's, oh man. You know, you might look in these crates and say, yeah, that crate's just been washed. We disinfected, it. it's clean. Mm -hmm. And it, it might be clean, but it needs to be cleaner. So, I mean, here's a good example of biofilm where, you know, you can tell the, the water must have a high iron content because mm -hmm. it's got that reddish tone. Yep. Uh, there's some tattoo ink still in there, that mm -hmm. blackness, but this is a washed crate. Yep. And then I always think it could be, be cleaner because there's this dribble of, it was detergent, mm -hmm. degreaser or something that dribbled down and actually cleaned just like the biofilm off. Really, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, do, do you think the, the temperature of the water as you wash it helps? All that is important. So hot water is really important to wash mm -hmm. with because it's going to Mm -hmm. help lift off more yes. organic matter I too hot definitely. we'll cook it on there yeah and it actually will add to biofilm because we're cooking mm -hmm. some of those proteins onto the surface so the surface itself if it's old if, i think mean, plastic is easier to clean mm -hmm. we don't use wood to build throwing crates anymore so okay. um, those are all important factors too absolutely uh, McRebel. So what Ronald. we're talking about okay. is uh, not this guy. Not He's Ronald. A, Ronald Rebel? Not, not no? Mc, McDonald, but no. McRebel. And so <laughs> uh, it's an acronym. It stands for Management Changes to Reduce Exposure to Bacteria and Eliminate Losses. Wow, that's a mouthful. It's. I mean, that's not going on my decal. <laughs> my sticker won't. It won't fit. Just won't fit. Just McRebel. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> okay. And actually, we use modified McRebel, we say. That's now. And if, if, okay. uh, if you've gone through a PD break, if you've been unfortunate or a PERS elimination, mm -hmm. we're going to use a lot of the same strategies. But it really is managing our internal biosecurity. Mm -hmm. And that's, again, another whole topic for another pig channel. Absolutely. Session. Maybe we should do this often. Rotavirus. I'll just very briefly talk about this. I mean, someone... Um, called it the, the flu of the gut. And I always think that's a good way to put it because rotavirus is a virus like flu that likes to mutate every time it replicates. Mm -hmm. And so we end up with this wide variation in, in uh, sequencing mm -hmm. or strains on the farm. And, uh, and it's very stable in the environment. So that's a, that's a good picture. Yeah, I like that picture too. Yeah. I mean, they look quite content to sit there, but we're talking about scours. So yeah. obviously they're they can't get it's off fantastic. the toilet. It's really it's, on top. It's, it's on really point bad. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Here's a, I mean, this was shared to me by, by Merck, who's done a lot of, of supportive rotavirus over the past several months and years. Uh, and I'll tell you why in a second with their vaccines. But uh, they're able to show us that in their database, and we've contributed quite a bit to the Manitoba uh, sequences, but mm -hmm. um, you can see the different ABC strains that are by province being found out there. And so you can okay. see, I mean, any of the big pig producing provinces have all three strains at certain percentages. Oh, yeah. And so um, it's everywhere. Mm -hmm. some, some management strategies that have kind of helped. Again, these are all crutches. They're not going to eliminate your scour. We're really just trying to mm -hmm. keep a lid on the flare-ups. Yes. Uh, but we'll make some rotavirus ice cubes on some farms. Here's an example of you take a scouring piglet, you harvest the intestines, and you blend them with a bit of water. And that pureed intestine, we freeze. And now you can imagine that that puree now has a very high level of hopefully rotavirus. Mm -hmm. It may have other things in it too. So yeah. you don't want to just backfeed yeah. it without 
the knowledge of what's in there. Well, that's really important to have the vet know what is in there. I mean, we we, uh, we don't like to throw darts in the dark, Absolutely. right? And so we need to know what we're we're backfeeding. Mm -hmm. uh, but it has been a strategy that's been helpful. Mm -hmm. And on this actually exact farm, we would take those ice cubes and we would send them to the lab, and they'll tell us, "Here's what's in the." the back feed. Mm -hmm. We'll also test for PERS and circovirus and other things that we don't want to flare up mm -hmm. uh, as disease challenges. We just really want to focus on the rotavirus in this case. Absolutely. <clears throat> so I said, um, Merck has had this uh, Socovity vaccine. They've also had pro system RCE for a long time. If you're fortunate and have a rotavirus group A on your farm, that's very similar to what pro system has in it. I think it works really well. Mm -hmm. We're finding fewer farms have that rota A or they've had Bs and Cs added to the mix. And so okay. we're needing to now go to other strategies, whether it's the ice cube or this new toolbox we've got in our tool. Uh, tool in the toolbox is uh, Sequivity rotavirus vaccine. It's kind of like an autogenous custom vaccine mm -hmm. built out of your rota strain yeah. or strains as the case may be. So I like I mean, having that option to, help to do that. It's good to have options for yeah. sure. We're still learning about it. And uh, I mean, we've had some farms now, I think we feel <clears throat> confident in saying it's really helped, mm -hmm. but it's early days. So yeah, stay tuned everyone. Mm -hmm. uh, that's, that's our scour. I mean, the question was what changed, what changed. So it went through a lot yeah. of things that, um, potential things that you need to look at mm -hmm. did those things change or not so yeah using a similar logic we're going to shift gears to strep suis mm -hmm. so we're talking about mainly wean pig strep okay. suis mm -hmm. meningitis and so we're talking about the recumbent kind of these pigs right they're they're laying on their side rec recumbent we say mm -hmm. or the drunken sailor pigs that are kind of wobbly yep. or leaning on the the not, or not, whatever. not a drunken vet or something no. no never no okay sudden deaths can be strep they can be other things too but sudden deaths are part of the okay. strep suicide okay. uh, issues that we need to troubleshoot mm -hmm. from time to time and paddling pigs yeah. not not these paddling pigs these, um, this, these yeah, guys. yeah we, i mean they know what we're doing yeah okay that's good notwithstanding you could have swollen well joints or the thumpers mm -hmm. the really heavy yeah. breathers all those mm -hmm. things too okay so Back to our question. What changed? What changed? Is it a random strep breakout? Yeah, it's like <laughs> not like <likely. laughs> random doesn't happen. There's always no, there's always something. There's something. Always something. There's, yeah. there's a cause. So we yeah. gotta figure out and put our finger on what's changed to develop that mm -hmm. situation to allow that absolutely that situation to develop. So um did something change with the pig? Yeah. Did something change with the pig's environment? Absolutely. Did something change with the actual bug? Maybe that uh, there's resistance building with mm -hmm. that strep. So the antibiotics we've relied on for years aren't working as well anymore. Yes. So, I mean, we call this the, the disease triad or, or triangle. Mm -hmm. And uh, whatever changed is leading to yes. this clinical flare-up. Again, of it's strep. different factors, yeah. right? So I'm going to introduce this concept of the piggy bank. And I mean, we, had a, we have a vet student this summer with us and he... Uh, he just, he came up with this idea and I thought, oh, yeah. this resonates with me. It, me too. It's I mean, really, really I, smart. Uh, I like to uh, think of things in simple terms. And so the piggy bank analogy is this. Right before we wean that pig, mm -hmm. piggy bank's full. It is chocker block full of coins. Yes. Couldn't get another coin in it. Because if you think about it, the pigs had a pretty good life. If we did all those things we just talked about with the mm -hmm. scour, we do all those things really well. I mean, he's got pretty low stress. Yes meals come to him every mm -hmm. hour or you know he's got all that lactogenic protection absolutely yeah yeah he, uh, he's got a good environment you warm the pig up mm -hmm. and you kept them warm yeah the sow was was you know had all engines firing he's like shp super happy pigs super happy pigs that's right life was good yeah life was good but then we wean the pig there you go i mean that's our first mistake we should never wean pigs <laughs> <laughs> well <Wow>. okay <laughs> it's hard to eat them when they're not weaned okay so everything we do to the pig from here on in is going to be a stress for him right? yes yes and so we lose mom mm -hmm. that's a stress we, <clears throat> we remove some more coins when we wean the vet because i mean it's loud we're mm -hmm. shaking rattle paddles oh, and shaker yeah. cans and it's cold it that's might be true. dark it might be really bright absolutely whatever right yeah. lots of stress another coin comes out because we changed the food yes we changed Absolutely. the environment. We went from this 
nice heat lamp or heat pad mm. perfect for pig oh they're just there hanging out and it's cozy you know, cozy yeah wham <laughs> into the cold hallway <laughs> wham into the trailer yeah and, and minus then, 40 outside and then and it, it, into a room if they didn't warm it pre previously they'll be it's really cold that's, right that's a lot of stress yeah so anyway yeah we we lose that cohesiveness of the family unit like I went from having my brothers and sisters around me that, yeah, we didn't always get along, but mm -hmm. it's kind of fun to, oh man, now I have a hundred other. Absolutely. I mean, <laughs> and they're jerks. Like they pick on well, me oh, yeah. all the time. Well, they bite my tail. They bite my belly. You know, Pushing me around. Look at them yeah. all scratched up. That's right. Yeah. I mean, stressful. That is stress. And then on top of that, we might put a couple sources together. We've got what I say is acclimation stress. So mm -hmm. You came from a family that had certain disease status and my family was different and now we have to share. So, mm -hmm. I mean, that's stress too. Yes. So all these kind of lead to this oh, yeah. draining of the piggy bank. And then the other thing overlying all this is we wean the pig at the worst time. I mean, <laughs> go back to our passive immunity that we talked yeah. about, right? So we get lots of colostrum and, and really good antibody levels. Mm -hmm. The own pig's immune system hasn't really kicked into gear yet. Yeah. And so we call that the active immune system. Mm -hmm. It's just ramping up after we wean. So when we wean that pig, it's actually at his lowest point for immunity. Yeah. And so we're there doing a good job of draining that. You're draining that, that draining pig. That piggy bank. Yeah. So kind of like you talked about with phone, charging the phone up, yes. right? So how do we build the bank back up? Mm -hmm. So keep it simple. <clears throat> build it up through good environment, good food, mm -hmm. good water, basic husbandry. Yes. Right. We call it care. We call it care. Yeah. Yeah. We care. We care. To fill the bank. That's right. Okay. <clears throat> Get that full bank again. Mm -hmm. Okay. So tell well, us about how to care for that pig. Well, yeah. We, you talk about all of this, the weaning challenges and, and all, all those things that happen to the pigs, right? Mm -hmm. Environmental. We talk about taking them out and then Burr. in the truck and yep. then they get cold and stuff like that. Social, behavioral chilling with your favorite brother there now it's this <laughs> like, who, are all these who the heck are you guys yeah, yeah. and and it, and it's hard right i mean mm -hmm. it's that you get milk every hour with mom now you have to find your own on your own liquid source and feed yeah. uh, that's hard and nutritional changes as well i mean from liquid feed to solid feed yeah right uh, liquid food to solid feed physiological this is uh the gut it's structure changing, yeah. it's changing and you talk about the immunity structure change too so those are the changes that we really need to think about so really we have to focus on the first 72 hours of those pigs when they come in the care that we talk about to get pigs off to a good start that mm -hmm. is essential okay first 72 first 72 hours that's well actually even before that because we have to prepare huh? we love buckets we have three buckets here but at the top there are only ah, very basic things we need to think about feed water dry place to sleep and care mm -hmm. it's the basics we call it care we call it care yeah. before pigs arrive make sure that room is clean they have feed there mm -hmm. it's warm you don't want to put them there when it's really cold and they chill. So after they arrive, the first 72 hours is really, really important. And that's, you know, only we can do that for them. Yeah. Okay. So those jerks in the rest of the pen are going to do it for them. <laughs> no. That's right. And uh, it's really important. Then everyday care, right? Mm -hmm. It's not just, okay, after 72 hours, I'm off. I'm going to watch some ball game or play. We have to do watch the pigs walk in the pen, Mm -hmm. no uh, tail to snout now to tail we have to watch and, and care for them okay so those are the those are the things that we need to do to get them off the good start so what if we do all those things mm -hmm. and i still have these flare-ups happening so what changed what changed <laughs> i don't know it's a good thanks for asking that question Dennis. So yeah what's changed so similar to what we did with the scours and the sow factors and stuff we're going to look at is something changed with the pig the environment or the bug mm -hmm. and so you know these are all again it's a checklist you got to verify but you know did we remove some money from that piggy bank because there was you know temperature was too cold there mm -hmm. was drafts the air quality sucked the ammonia or the co2 level was yep. really high the static pressure 
You can barely get that door open when you open the nursery door, right? And so it takes two of us to open it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's going to lead to drafts, exactly. probably, unless your inlets are tight. But just being under that static pressure all the time mm -hmm. adds physiologic stress. Absolutely. Mycotoxins, yeah. water quality, parity mm -hmm. structure. Again, you know, um, I'll get to uh, what I think um, is pretty important. So ultimately what happened, though, is now we've got uh, a situation where we've continued to make bank withdrawals. So I'm just going to try and use my uh, pointer here. Mm -hmm. What we don't know is at what point, like, is it here that strep suicide happens when the bank gets down that low? Mm. Or, or is it here? <clears throat> like maybe we put the pigs in the room that was too cold. So it was chilled. So the bank was down to here. Hmm. And then may maybe we don't have our ventilation set, right? So the static pressure is too high and we've got drafts. We, yeah. So we've got a draft, we've got static pressure issues. Mm -hmm. It was cold. And you know maybe that le led up to here. But mm -hmm. maybe that's not the strep thr threshold, but maybe that particular week, we weaned extra gilts. gilts. And yep. to wean extra gilts meant we probably went mm -hmm. over target. And so maybe we had to drop our wean age that week too. Mm -hmm. And so now we've, we've now reached this, yep. this crazy line where this mm -hmm. is, maybe this is the, uh, I like my artist skills here, Dennis. Uh, oh, you're really good. You're uh, very really good. creative. Maybe that's the strep threshold that now we have a threshold met and we have a flare up. And so- yes. It's not likely one thing from that list. It's this group. It, it's of not black, black or white. It's no. It's not. It's, uh, it's additive. Yes. Add stress. Add stress. Add stress. Bingo. Mm -hmm. There we go. We've got a flare up. We got a flare up. So, so what changed? What changed? Other things could change too. Whatever we've used as strategies before, mm -hmm. maybe we've been relying on a pulse of water med or mm -hmm. medications in the feed. So maybe the bug actually changed. Yep. Maybe we've got the wrong diagnosis as well maybe we've got new staff that aren't quite as observant to to know the pigs are telling us they're cold mm -hmm. right uh, maybe we've got other diseases challenge, challenging the pig that just makes them more susceptible to, yeah. to kind of reaching that that threshold so here's an example a couple of weeks ago actually a farm had sudden deaths in the nursery just mm -hmm. after weaning and went oh for sure we've got a strep flare up not, nothing changed, right? I mean, so we go out there and, and lo and behold, actually, diagnostically, because there's always a little bit of dribble mm -hmm. and diarrhea post weaning on this farm. Uh, when we cut those pigs open, it was actually a hemolytic E. coli that was causing the sudden death. So we all thought, oh, it's a strep flare up, mm -hmm. but it wasn't. So, I mean, it's, it's good to, it's good to know. You, it's good to know. You need to dig in. And, and yeah. the, the strategy for dealing with this was different than, Plan A, we're going in, okay, we're going to deal with the strep flare-up. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 Uh, so I talked about the, the young staff person maybe not understanding how to read the mm -hmm. pig's behavior as a group. Yeah. And so, I mean, I don't know if anybody has seen us use or maybe you've seen uh, your uh, consultants come in the barn. I don't know if you can see this on the screen, but uh, this is our uh, FIL hour. Um, it's an infrared camera that takes pictures like these. Mm -hmm. And uh, what's interesting, and this is a nursery room that has- So uh, you mean pigs speak? Pigs talk are a different Ooh, language okay. than us, for sure. Okay. Yeah, you gotta learn to, to speak their language. I can, uh, yeah. But this, this camera can help. Mm -hmm. So this. what you'll see here is that the solid flooring here before the slatted floor in the nursery has no pigs on it, right? They're all piled up back here. Mm -hmm. And so, and the, the, you know, you can, the, each really dark red spot is actually the, the focal point on a pig and the rest of the space around it is the rest of the pig. Mm -hmm. So you can see here that they're all piling at the back. It's not that the floor isn't warm. You can see the floor actually, based on this temperature grid down here, the hottest is 37.2, the lowest is 23, the dark stuff. So on average, we're probably <clears throat> around 30 plus. Mm -hmm. Floor is warm. There's a draft there that yes. you can't see. You can't see with this, but you read the pig's body language and yeah. then you can kind of figure that out, right? So yes. You just have to learn. Speak their language. Speak yeah. their language and they, they will tell you. Yeah, that's right. So evaluating the ventilation, we all, when there's a, a strep flare up, mm -hmm. all those things we talked about are important. 
one of the first things we ever do is what's changed with the environment. Mm -hmm. Because I mean, those, I mean, you told me we're in there. If we walk a room, we're in there for 10 minutes or an hour or whatever. Mm -hmm. What, what's the pig exposed to you? You I always love when you say this. <laughs> well, the pig, the pig experiences the environment. Yeah, 24-7. 24-7, every day, yeah. all day long. Yeah. So, and then we're just going there for a few minutes and say, like, oh, they're fine. It feels pretty good, actually. Yeah. But, but really, they... But not. what happened last night at three in the morning or whatever? We right? don't so, know. Yeah. So Dennis will come to your farm at three in the morning with his toys. You want to do that? That Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean... Here's a, a CO2 monitor, a gauge. A lot of your, you know, modern day, very sophisticated controlling mm-hmm. systems. Yeah. Uh, if you have Maximus or one of the other ones, yeah, uh, they'll do that. This do. How about this? Oh, this is a Kestrel. This is my favorite toy. Yeah. So this measures temperature and airspeed, and so we can mm-hmm. tell kind of if there's drafts. Yes. Where they are and how yep. how much chilling power that draft has. And so. then you can make necessary adjustments to yeah. minimize it. Yeah. yeah. And again, awesome. this is a fancy one. You can actually, I think, get attachments or apps on your phone even now. Yeah, I believe so. So, I mean, yeah. there's an app for So, that. if you guys have, you're using something, shout out to you guys and send send some comments. And we'd love to hear your, your thoughts on, yeah. on the tools you've made. Exactly. So, that's it. That was a whirlwind. That's, that's it. That, that's that was it. a lot. Oh, I wow. mean, I hope everybody was taking notes. I think Cause, so. Because <laughs> uh, I wasn't. Yeah. Well, I have some questions here. Okay. Uh, Philip says, I have new glasses. Thanks, Philip. You know this. Those are nice glasses, Dennis. <laughs> Was that, or did I miss my, line, my cue? <laughs> you, know, you should, you should uh, approve of that, yeah. Where do you buy Piglet Catcher you posted on your Zoom? It's available at anywhere you can get I think mostly price. egg supply stores. Yeah. I know yeah. that particular one came from shippers. So, yeah, good mm-hmm. question. They're great. They're yeah. great. So what else do we have here? Um, what temperature? What temperature is too hot for washing? So I here's my rule of thumb: is I want to wash with water that's 120 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay. So if you're at 140, that's borderline. Any higher than that, you're going to be cooking proteins, denaturing, and they stick to the surface at a higher rate, mm-hmm. and it might actually make long-term washing take longer. So, okay. Thank you. What what good? What is a good weaning temperature? Not sure if it's at, at the firing room level or. Yeah. Let, maybe the question is for the nursery. For the nursery. Yeah. To to, I, I'd say about eighty four was it? Yeah. So so eighty four. I mean, it, I mean, it's a typical bed answer. It depends. Uh, it depends on your room mm-hmm. setup. If you've got heated floor and a covered creep area or whatever, but if you don't have any of that. You know, and the genetics a little bit too. We know there are some genetics that really thrive with really warm rooms. Then you can drop them fairly quickly. But yeah, eighty-four to eighty-eight degrees yeah. Fahrenheit. So in that kind of twenty-seven yeah, to twenty-nine, thirty. Okay. Celsius. Okay. Thank you. From uh, Lauren Stahl here. If you vaccinate sows pre-firing with any autogenous vaccine, how long immunity will those pigs have after weaning? It's a really good question. So the question is, how long does that immunity last after colostrum? So, the, mm-hmm. and I'll, I'll answer it in two ways. One is when we talk lactogenic or the milk protection, because we vaccinate the cell preferral with scour vaccine. Mm-hmm. We boost all those antibodies in the milk yep. and colostrum, but the milk, mm-hmm. all of that lactogenic immunity is gone as soon as you mean them. We wean those pigs because the, the milk has gone from the belly. Yeah. So literally within an hour, it's They're gone. Done. Yep. On the on the colostrum side, though, it's a, li- a little bit dependent on the organism. For example, I think we call we, we talk about half-lives of antibody. So you drink the colostrum, those antibodies mm-hmm. circulate around the body. Those antibodies wear out or get old and get taken out of the circulated system. Mm-hmm. And so every 14 to 16 days. <clears throat> we're going to go from having a full tank of antibodies to a half and then another 14 days, there'll be a quarter and then an eighth full. Mm-hmm. And so, I mean, really for all intents and purposes, uh, six to eight weeks is about as long as we can expect to have much protection at all from the classroom. Okay. It's long enough though, to get the pig weaned. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah, good question. Yeah. 
Uh, we have a few more here. When using a drying agent, does it matter if you use the same container and powder for multiple liters? Shake and bake. Uh, shake and bake. That's a good one. Well, what do, you, what do you think? I think if you have a really clean, um, and we always try to ask people to scrape the backs of sows and make sure that the load, bacterial load or bug load of the of that crate is low, we can use that because mm -hmm. those pigs are sterile. Uh, you know, they don't mm -hmm. have much there. Um, you can use that and um, put it back and so use it again. So use it later and yeah. later, later, yeah. yeah. Okay. But then it, not saying that you should use it all the time without cleaning it. it needs to be cleaned, replaced, and changed, especially if you're seeing it between rooms, that'd be a, mm -hmm. the, the, the gold standard, okay. I guess. So, okay, is there a, is there no way to increase colostrum in cells? Increase colostrum. So, yeah, so a couple things. One is we can in, improve colostrum quality by vaccinating the sow and making mm -hmm. sure she's got really good nutrition. I know you guys already do this, but okay. if she Pharaoh is having had really good late gestation nutrition, she'll start concentrating antibodies into her mammary glands around 90 or, or 100 days of gestation. Mm -hmm. And that's why we want to get that vaccine into her before that. And so if we do that, um, we're going to probably optimize how much antibody is in the mm -hmm. colostrum. Yeah. Um, so that's the quality of the colostrum mm -hmm. or how, how yellow that, that, the that cup that, is. Yeah. Yeah. And so if we talk about quantity of colostrum, I mean, that has, there's a lot of different factors that can go into that. I think mm -hmm. how we feed the sow pre-farrow as she's farrowing and immediately after farrowing can impact if we end up with hard underlines, mm -hmm. like not necessarily mastitis, but just some congestion or firmness mm -hmm. or edema, we say fluid buildup. Yeah. Um, so she might have the colostrum there, but the pigs can't actually pull it out because yeah. it's so firm and hard yeah. in there. Uh, so that's, that's probably a big factor too on, mm -hmm. on how much colostrum is so there. The, the, qual the quality yeah. is the thing that we can mm -hmm. mostly improve yeah. on. Just so a, a follow-up comment to that is we've just started to do this, mm -hmm. um, on a few farms is we're actually now measuring passive. Yeah, that's true protection through measuring antibody levels in the piglets, mm -hmm. uh, yep. specifically IgG levels, immunoglobulin levels, 24 hours after they've been born or after they've received colostrum. And so that's, if yep. you're interested in knowing more about that, talk to your vets because we're just starting to dabble. Yes. Um, that's a, but, that's a hemat 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 hematocrit testing. That that's right. Yeah. Yeah. We oh, take a little sorry, bit of piglet it's blood. My French. Uh, it's your friend. I could tell. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> Well, it's it's three fifteen. We're fifteen minutes over, and we want to respect time. And uh, we'll answer some of you, the questions that you have that uh, you asked us. But thank you for. Uh, we'll we'll put them in our video post when we announce the the winners of the door prizes. That's next right. Week. That's right. Yeah. Um, yeah. So again, I just want to take a last opportunity to really thank our sponsors or our featured sponsors. Siva and PIC, as well as all of the other sponsors for the pig channel. Mm -hmm. um, and I also want to just say this is our last pig channel seminar in English until September 15th, when the Shakespeare Mill Group is going to present uh, from Ontario in September. So stay tuned for the registration announcement for mm -hmm. that, too. And uh, I have a question, actually, yes. yeah. Dennis. What, what's that, Blaine? What, what else is changing? There's something else. Aside from the weather, yeah. Well, oh. what's new with you? Well, yeah, it's uh, you'll be seeing less of me and uh, in Manitoba. I'll be you'll see more of me in Ontario, and I'm uh, I'll be I'll be joining the the team there for uh, Demeter Ontario. So, oh, congratulations! That's, that's, that's new. We uh, for <laughs> for everybody in the audience, we've worked together for sixteen or seventeen years, and yeah. so I I do sincerely. We'll miss you for sure. I mean, you've been a oh, valued definitely. team member here. And I know Ryan and Marsha and the group in Ontario are going to really like having you oh, on thanks, their Blaine. team. Yeah. Yeah. But we're not getting rid of you. No, we're, right? we're still part of that big team. And, and you'll yeah. still be back in Manitoba fairly frequently. So absolutely got yes. deep roots. That's right. So anyway, so. yeah, that has changed as well. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thanks again, everyone, for attending. Thank you. Have a good weekend and, and a great summer. Bye for now. Bye for now. <laughs> we have to do that. <laughs>